Hi, I'm Carrie Murphy and welcome to Spotlight, where we showcase extraordinary people and their businesses to help you live the most inspired life possible. And whether you are a startup entrepreneur or you are well on your way, there's usually one area that we want to close our eyes to and not pay that much attention. And that is our finances. And I have learned over the years how important it is to bring someone on your team that you can truly trust and helping you manage your budgets, your finances, and taking that monkey off of your plate completely. And today I have someone that I'm so excited to share with you because she can help you get rid of that overwhelm. Candy Messer, I'm so excited to have you with me today. I'm glad to be here. So you didn't start off as being an entrepreneur. Like that wasn't something you woke up one day and said, this is the life for me. Not at all. I didn't have anyone except my grandfather who was an entrepreneur and he wasn't local. So I didn't grow up seeing someone doing their own thing. And I just had a real job and then was just encouraged to get out there and start my own business by my husband. And was that scary for you? It was terrifying, actually. <laughs> yeah. I was working the real job, as I said, and I had had someone who begged me to help her start her reconciliation. She was trying to do her own and for her husband's business. And she just said, I really hate reconciling accounts. It's not easy. <laughs> Numbers don't match for me. Yeah. And, you know, please help. And it took me about three months, I think, to go ahead and agree because it was to totally different. Yes, yeah. to help her. It was totally different. And I thought, well, if I do that, I have to get a business license and I have to start my own business. And that's a scary thing. That is yeah. a scary thing. But how many years has it been now since you have started that? That was December 2002. Wow, that's amazing. Well, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. And I know for being an entrepreneur myself for so long and working with so many, that there are very few of us that are really good with our numbers and really good with our vision, <laughs> you know? Exactly. And so it is so wonderful when I meet people like you um, that I truly would like hand over my books and feel so safe because you really understand entrepreneurs. You understand the fear around like letting someone else in to see mm -hmm. the numbers, and yet you're really good at the numbers. So you're kind of an anomaly over here. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me where your business has grown to in the time that you started it in 2002. Well, I was home-based originally, and again, was working my job at the time. The real job? The real job, yes, yes at the time, and so I was, you know, filling in um, on the side, I guess, as I had the couple days off, I had two smaller children that I wanted to volunteer and do other things. So I was working only part time at the job. And so I'd go once or twice a month to a client, do the work. And then I thought, well, you know, this needs to have a little bit more because the cost of having a business and those licenses and everything, you know, yeah. when you really look at the profit, I thought, well, I need a few more clients. So I started adding. And then after about a year, my husband said, just quit your job, you know, do your own thing. People love what you're doing and you'll make more money anyway. You'll have more fun, you know, so. And have you had more fun? Oh, of course, but, <laughs> but I was terrified. I was really upset when he basically made me quit at first and I thought I'm giving up a guaranteed paycheck and yeah. just the normal routine of, you know, a regular job to going into being my own boss and the income is up to me. Okay, so let's talk about this for just a second because you might be watching and saying, I want to give up my real job. I want to and I am scared to death because mm -hmm. I'm giving up security, a paycheck I know that's coming in, and yet there's so much more on the other side of that. So what would you tell that person who is watching saying, I want to do that and I'm terrified? <laughs> I would say it is a scary thing, but you can do it. And if you're afraid to completely leave your secure job, then do it on the side like I did at first until you can have the revenue that you feel comfortable and then you can go ahead and just do your own business full time. Mm. Good advice, good advice. So you work with so many entrepreneurs who are finally letting go and saying, please help me with my books. Um, and whether it's taxes or licenses, what do you see are probably some of the biggest either mistakes or things that people don't even think about when it comes to their numbers? I think one of the mistakes is someone has a hobby or they lost a job and decide to start a business and they don't realize everything they have to do legally to operate. Whether it's getting their city business license or if they're doing business under a business name, you actually have to file with the county. And of course, every state has some different regulations, so it's important to check 
in their state, but knowing for your city or county or state, even the federal government, what are the requirements for you to have and making sure you're in compliance with those because failing to do so can be costly. Yes, the government isn't too forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. They're like, just because you didn't know doesn't yeah. mean you weren't right. supposed to do it. Right. And what else, when it comes to maybe bookkeeping in general, what are some practices that we should be in a habit of or having someone else do for us on a regular basis? Well, number one, what I say is don't mix business and personal funds. Have a separate checking account, credit card account, whatever you're going to use for the business. Uh, a lot of times people think it's just easier to have one account, but it actually makes the bookkeeping more difficult because you have to track which ones are business, which are personal. Absolutely, right. And if you're audited, there can be some things that the IRS might say, well, this doesn't really look to be business, and they might disallow those write-offs. So keeping it completely separate. Are you telling me my hair appointments are not <laughs> business? Well, <laughs> I'm, just kidding, I'm just kidding. Okay, but I do see that quite a bit, people commingling funds. Mm -hmm. So separate those funds. Yes. What else? Um, one of the things, too, is just knowing that often you're thinking you're saving money by doing it yourself, but the stress that you're putting yourself under and the amount of time that you're spending, you could actually be doing something to grow your business with the time you're spending, and you might find that you'll actually be more profitable long run by outsourcing to a professional. Um, can I just say amen to that? <laughs> I mean, if there's anything I probably talk to the entrepreneurs that I mentor, it is get help, hire help, and getting through that mindset of I can't afford help. Mm -hmm. Because when you're able to do more of what you love, what you're really good at, when you're in your zone of what I say, your genius, like it pays for itself. For sure. So you, you almost, can I say, that you almost have to let go of some money so mm -hmm. you can actually receive some more money. That's true. And if you look at the peace of mind that you have when you give it away to someone else, there's so many who come to me that are stressed and overwhelmed and not sure they're doing it right. And the minute they finally let go and they take that breath and they're like, you know what? I should have done this earlier. Yeah. I feel so much better. So when shopping for a bookkeeper or someone to help with you know, your overall finances, what are the things that they should look for? Well, one of the things I say is, first of all, ask your friends or other people you know in business for some references mm -hmm. or referrals. Um, but seeing do they know your business, do they operate with companies that are the same entity type? You know, most of us have worked with all the different types, but there might be someone starting out who maybe isn't as comfortable. So some people also think I need to get someone who's less expensive and often they're not as educated. So they may not actually get everything properly, you know, right. expensed. You think you're saving, but you're actually paying. That's correct. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. So just having someone who really understands what you need as well. Um, catering their services to the specific needs of that business and not trying to fix, uh, fit everyone into one little box. Mm -hmm. Oh, such good advice. <laughs> so has there been a time in your life besides starting this business and trusting, right? Because mm -hmm. you said your husband kind of pushed you out a little bit. And I love that you don't come from an entrepreneurial background because this is just such a great example, Candy, of what's possible when you do let go of what you feel is safe. Mm -hmm. Um, how else do you continue to do that in your life? Oh goodness, I think we always have to continue growing in our business and you know taking the steps and it's sometimes scary to start something new. You know, I had to hire employees and that was a scary thing too because now I have employees dependent upon me to generate enough income to keep them busy as yeah, well. And so yeah. that was a scary step and just you know learning other things and stepping out and doing more in the business, speaking, Writing, I never thought I would write. It was scary just to start a blog or a newsletter. Yeah, yeah. And I've been in two books as a co-author. So that was a scary thing too. But my goal of educating those business owners and helping them know what those mistakes are to avoid them before mm -hmm. they make them was huge. And so that kind of kept me going and yeah. stepping out, even if I was a little bit scared. Oh, I'm so glad because, you know, it, it might not be sexy, like talking about bookkeeping might not be something that you're like, I'm gonna wake up today and I'm gonna watch a video on bookkeeping. But if you really do want to build a brand that creates the impact that you want in the world, you have to be able to let go of things that you're not good at and mm -hmm. to hire people that you trust. And Candy, you know, not only my personal experience with you, but everyone that I know who works with you says nothing but amazing things because you are that person. You are that trustworthy person. And I think that that's important that regardless of who you choose to work with, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to your finances, to really have someone on your side that you can trust and ask those questions too. Exactly. So if people want to find out more about how they get in touch with you and maybe talk to you about hiring you or what they should do next in their business, how do they do that? 
Uh, well, you could go to my website, www.abandp.com. And actually, there's a questionnaire there you can fill out that gives us a little bit of information about you. And I can have a phone conversation with you to see if the services that we offer are a good fit for you. Uh, you could also call our office at 310-534-5577 and a friendly staff member or myself mm -hmm. are there to help you too. Because she does have a team <laughs> now. So do you work with people outside of the area? I do. With technology now, it doesn't have to be just local. Yeah. Um, some people feel that they still need a local person and that's fine too. But if you're familiar with technology and comfortable, we can definitely work. I have people in multiple states and uh, you know they're just as easy to work with as someone just down the street. Absolutely. My whole team is remote and I'm so thankful for that technology and so thankful for you. Thank oh, you thank for you. coming on the Spotlight interview and sharing your genius with us. Um, anything else you want to share before we send people your way? <laughs> I would just say you might be feeling overwhelmed that you have to do it all, but there are professionals out there to help you, whether it's me or someone else. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for some help. Uh, ask for help. That's the only way you can truly live this inspired life we keep talking about. So I hope you're inspired to take some action and find those people to support you. Of course, we would love to hear from you. So please post your comments below. And if you like this interview, please share it because when you are inspired, you inspire others. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember to keep dreaming it, living it, and being it. Until next time.